Recording in progress. Welcome to Energy Stew. This is Peter Roth, your host. And I'd like to ask you, how's your dream life been? Are you getting any special visitations? <laughs> Isn't it interesting how unusual so many of our dreams are in the first place? But then it gets even more fascinating when we have special visits. So to help us understand how this all works in the astral planes, et cetera, is uh, a wonderful friend and, and genius who's written many books and has been on Energy Stew many times before. And I just love speaking with her, Tricia McCannon. Welcome to Energy Stew. Oh, thank you, Peter. It's always great to be back. I love our shows because they're deep and interesting and multidimensional. So, <laughs> well, we are all multidimensional anyway. We just most people don't know it. <laughs> True. Yeah. So, we we get these dreams that you know people show up and unexpectedly. Usually, I guess maybe we can call from them. You'll explain all that. You know, if we intend our, some dreams, we might be able to do better at it. But you're you're somebody who's done a lot of research uh, on all levels of of the astral plane and and how how it all works in ways that we can understand it. So where do we start? To which astral plane do we start on? <laughs> So yeah, first off, thanks for having me on. And it's always wonderful to talk to uh, our listeners and viewers. Um, I wanna just give a little bit of a background so that you all know, um, like many people, I've been very active on the inner plane since I was uh, young. And as we all know, there are different kinds of dreams. We can have nightmares. We can have sorting dreams where our subconscious is just trying to sort out the events of the day. We can have dreams that are kind of polluted dreams because we watch too much horror or television before we went to sleep or the news, okay, uh, which is somewhat like that. Uh, we can have, um, we can also have symbolic dreams and probably 85% of people's dreams are, sim they happen at a certain level of the astral plane that's called the reflection realms. And uh, these are realms where um, our subconscious is trying to process and communicate with us about uh, situations, but it, it does it in a symbolic form. So this is where you're talking to your uncle, but uh, he has your mother's head. Okay. And, and so it, does, it makes perfect sense in the dream, but we wake up and we're like, what? But, you know, what we discover is your uncle and your mother both have the same political opinions or social opinions, or they both were critical of you, or they were both supportive of you. So basically the subconscious is saying like mother, like uncle, okay, hear this message, either it's a positive one or negative one. So, so I teach many levels of dreaming, including dream symbology for this level, but it's even more exciting when we start to get into other higher levels where we're not just processing messages from our higher self or our subconscious, but where we're actually interacting with real beings, uh, you know, angels, masters, uh, spirit guides from the other side, or even ancestors or people that we love that have crossed over. Now, these can be human people, but they can also be pet, beloved pets that we had a powerful bond with. These take place at a higher level of the astral. Um, and for our audience, you know, generally speaking, I'm going to give you a little roadmap. Uh, and of course, there are different versions of this roadmap. But let us just say that there are seven dimensional planes. Every one of those planes has seven sub octaves, just like there's seven chakras. We can also argue that there are 12 chakras that, uh, because the other five live outside of the body, not just in the endocrine system and the physical body. It's You can say the same thing about the planes, but let's just work on the theosophical model of uh, seven planes. So this is the third dimension. This is the third dimensional plane. We actually have seven sub octaves, believe it or not, in the third dimension. Every octave and sub-octave and dimension or plane are separated through vibration. So, for example, when you go to someplace like England and the crop circles, 
and you're in a meditation and you open your eyes and you suddenly see a fairy fly by, okay? That's actually a being that exists in one of the higher sub octaves of the third dimension. It could be also one of the octaves of the fourth dimension. But these, um, th when the ayahuascaro shamans in South America take ayahuasca and they see these gigantic dragons with mermaids in the rivers, okay, they're peeling back the layers to be able to see into the other dimensions. They're accessing a more holistic part of their brain, basically. Most of us, we just see in one kind of wavelength, so to speak, just like in visible wavelength, you know, it's a very narrow band. There's x-rays and gamma rays and infrared and all these other things we don't even see in different light spectrums. So when we start talking about dreams, you know, part of the process of keeping a dream journal is so important is to number one, be able to clear out the subconscious messages, receive them, understand them, interpret them, and understand the symbology. Once we clear out enough of the, let's say, emotional or mental debris in our brains, what happens is we can start shifting our consciousness to be dreaming on a higher level. And those higher levels can move up into the causal plane where all the soul's records are. This can allow you to have past life dreams, future life dreams, uh, look at the timeline, predictive dreams, precognitive dreams, to move up even into the mental level where you're dealing with higher level masters in the fifth dimension. Uh, and um, to also, you know, most of our, let's say, ancestral dreams are going to be with people who are on some sub octave of the fourth. They've died in the physical world, but of course they never really die. They're still alive on the inner planes. And of course, many, 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 many people have contact. When a loved one dies, they will, uh, that person will come in the dream to communicate with their, their loved one, or they will show up at the end of the bed at night, or they will um, whisper their name aloud and the living, waking person here will turn around or they'll sense their presence or smell a smell associated with them. I had an so, unusual experience when my father died. This goes back uh, 63 years ago. I was a teenager. And in those days, we had TV sets that weren't that reliable, that antennas on them. And I remember very, within, I guess, a week after he died, I was tr fooling around with my t TV and it was all static, 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 static. And all of a sudden, a voice came through on the TV that said, your father just died. And then I it went back to static again. <laughs> So Gosh. I knew that I was being given a message. Um, just, I don't know why they, they, you know, it was kind of simple. Of course, I knew my father had died, um, you know, some days before. But um, I think this was to show me that there's some something from the other side. Let's say my father who engineered this, you know, and somehow it can be engineered. I, to I totally agree. Well, you know, we actually, if, if we take off this physical overcoat that we've got on, we're actually divine eternal light beings. But when we come down from the highest levels, we clothe ourselves in various subtle energy bodies. And those subtle energy bodies are electromagnetic. And so consequently, this is why, you know, you hear ghosts can affect, you know, um, electromagnetic systems you know we can communicate and of course at the astral level the astral body is called the nuri sarup or the uh, nuri means light uh, sarup means body it's the nuri sarup and it's a a, a beautiful uh, kind of um blue body uh, that is an exact replica of the physical body that we have. But if we, let's say, lose a limb or lose a finger or something, the Nuri Sarup, the astral body, will still have that limb. You've heard about people who feel like they have, like, when they lose a leg, they still feel like the leg is there. Well, in the in the energy bodies, the leg is still there. It's just not there in the physical world. Right. So, I've been teaching this amazing dream discourse series, and I hope my next book will be about dreams. You know, I've written five books, Dialogues with the Angels, Return of the Divine Sophia, uh, Jesus, the, <laughs> I think the subtitle is so long, The Explosive Story of the 30 Lost Years in the Ancient Mystery Religions. My goodness, that was a long subtitle. Uh, 
one on the, the angelic origins of the soul because I've read clairvoyantly for over 6,000 people all around the world. And I'm here in Atlanta, but probably 90% of my clients are all over the world. So I'm able to do it on the Zoom. And then my most recent book is a book really uh, that's kind of a bridge book about angels and uh, a lot of historical, um, amazing historical encounters that people like George Washington and Joan of Arc and um, uh, had. A, a right, seen we did a show about that book. Oh, good. Yeah. I forgot you did. But, and I, but, well, that was a while ago. And uh, I've interviewed you for all your books, <laughs> which I've wow. read, and and they're they're large books. You you're an amazingly prolific writer, and uh, fascinating information. Well, because I'm a hermetics teacher, I have uh, over a hundred illustrations in most of my books because I'm teaching people how the ancients used to encode this wisdom and this knowledge. And how looking at those images of hermetic images that are so encoded vibrationally opens up pathways in the brain. And so when we begin to keep a dream journal, what happens, you know, we have four brain wave states, beta, alpha, theta, delta. So busy beta is, you know, what we're talking in now. We're in our chatty little beta brains. You can always <laughs> beta because it's busy beta. Alpha is the creative brain. It's the brain that most people meditate in and lighter versions is where we create. If you're sitting coloring and you're not being critical of yourself, if you're being critical, you're going to beta, you drop into alpha naturally. So creativity. When we dream, we dream in theta. And this is where all of our Akashic records, our soul records are kept. This is where we have far more access to who we are on the inner planes, basically. The, the big thing that any person needs to do is figure out how to bring the information coming in through theta over the bridge of alpha into beta. So there are certain ways you can do this to develop your alpha consciousness so that you're able to remember your dreams. You know, you don't want to use an alarm clock. No, you can set your head before you go to sleep about the time you want to get up and your subconscious will wake you up 99% of the time. Uh, unless you, you know, were drunk or you didn't get any sleep or something, in which case your body will take over. You can keep a dream journal, even if you just write the date and the name of the dream, like the girl in the red dress. OK, uh, write down whatever you remember. That's a real important thing. The more you do it, the more you'll practice remembering the details of the dream. And this develops the alpha brain. Meditation helps to develop the alpha brain. Things like coloring, painting, um, being in nature develops the alpha brain. But what we're trying to do is not only develop alpha, but learn to bring the information that's really coming from the higher realms uh, uh, over the bridge so that the conscious self can understand it and integrate it and remember it. Does that make sense? Sure. And I, I find that I do remember the most profound dreams and so many of them i don't really pay that much attention to i'm glad i had them and move on but some of well, them have really stick with me well lucid dreams are the dreams in which we begin to wake up on the inner planes and realize we're dreaming Okay, so we're not just caught in the dream. It's like when you're watching a movie, sometimes you're so caught in the movie, you don't care about anything else around you. Okay, and that's how we are with our dreams. But if you wake up within the movie and go, oh my goodness, this, what am I, what am I doing here? You know, in the higher levels, they're the temples of golden wisdom. They're the great libraries that you can, you can go to halls of invention and bring down things that have never been invented down here. You can go to movie theaters and watch movies of screenplays that exist on the higher levels and come back and write your screenplay. So, I mean, I've done all of these things. And of course, if I can do it, others can too, but it takes practice, of course. So... Um, anyway, I was saying I've been teaching this dream series and I've been doing it for, uh, for a select group of people. And if you want to be one of those select group of people, you can go to a website called The Way of Truth, 
mysteryschool.org. It's a nonprofit organization, so .org. And I think you have to join if you're 62 or over, it's like 88 bucks a year. And if you're under 62, it's 133 or something like that. Sacred numbers, it's inexpensive. But it gives you access into these discourses that begin to teach you how to work on the inner planes, how to do soul travel, uh, how to um, learn to awaken within the lucid dreams. Okay. And so the next ones, I think this one I just did, which was ancestral shamanic dreams. And also I talked about ghosts, which is a little complicated subject. That was discourse number 11. And there'll probably be two more. I give one each month. And so if you go to the website and you decide to sign up, by all means, they'll send you a notice when you put in your email and let you know when I'm giving the next course and it's free because you signed up for the, you know, the series. And the previous, so the previous uh, the courses in the series were uh, recorded and they're archived. I talk about the physics of dreaming. I talk about the uh, sorting dreams, how to master your nightmares. Uh, there's several on really telling you what uh, certain things mean in symbolic dreams. And then we moved into predictive dreams, past and future life dreams. Uh, this one was ancestral dreams and also dreams where our pets can communicate with us. Um, as with all species, you know, there are, uh, I think we were talking about this yesterday, you know, they're dumber humans and they're more enlightened humans. They're dumber right. animals, more enlightened animals. And right. the more love we give to an animal, the more it awakens the consciousness of that animal. And they're right. able to observe then their identity and they can have lives on the and the astral. When you die, they'll meet you on the other side. When you dream and learn to dream that way, you can see them and meet them on the other side. You can even find out when they're coming back to reincarnate. Okay. And mm. many times will come back to be with their owners again. Mm, that's great. So I want to um, ask you, um, I have a question about uh, many times I, I have visitations um, while I'm being quiet and awake it's not like i've gone to sleep sometimes I, i'll wake up and i'll know i'm awake and all of a sudden i'll have visitations uh, often it's, it's not visual it's information that comes through and um and uh, sometimes it's actually i've had my ancestors i had my parents well my mother came visually to see me and um, that was beautiful and then while she was with me, my father spoke to me that I didn't get to see him. And and I, but I was sitting there awake. I was on the couch with, with my eyes closed. Um, so I wasn't seeing my mother with my visual eyes. It was with my mind. Eye. Yeah, but she was as clear as day and it was beautiful. And um, but then I've had number of of dreams from not dreams i was i'd be awake and different masters would speak to me like i was taught about the vaccines before they came out i was given scientific information about them before i heard from anyone else about it and then um and then a couple of years ago a number of scientists came through including tesla to teach me about the nature of viruses. And uh, as Tesla said, they're, they're plasmic intelligences. And so it was a very profound that morning and four, four teachers came through uh, for a few hours. But I was just lying there. I was I had been asleep, but I was wide awake, soaking up all this information. And so I don't know what what, state that is and i've also had lucid dreams where not long ago my grandfather showed up and i got to give him a hug well i'd love to jump in and tell you a little bit about what i think about what you shared if you sure that's the idea i want you to <laughs> well in the first place you know peter you're a very very old soul you're an advanced soul and you're really a master soul and you know you do it with such grace and lack of ego it's really lovely and anybody yeah, I'm, who knows. I'm just grateful for it <laughs> so basically the path in the path of mastery what we're learning to do is to basically hold all four brainwave states at the same time 
beta, which is our conscious active self. I'm talking, so I'm engaging my beta brain. Alpha, which is that place where we can be communicated with by your father or your uh, deceased relatives or even by masters, uh, the alpha state. Theta, which goes even deeper. Uh, and of course, theta gives you far more access into the higher realms. And then delta. Now, scientists, sleep scientists, don't really say what we're doing in delta, but I can tell you what we're doing. We're actually going in and kind of plugging into the soul the or the spirit, the Holy Spirit, if you want to call it that. Uh, if we don't plug into that on a regular basis, we don't get regenerated. And so this is why if uh, in sleep experiments, when they wake someone up, uh, when they go into theta and delta, uh, and for after enough nights, the person becomes very destabilized and uh, unbalanced because we have to get plugged in to, to that soul aspect of who we are. Um, so these experiences that you're having are part of the natural, without even pushing them, unfoldment of a soul in their steps towards mastery. Because in mastery, you're not just living in beta all the time. You're choosing to integrate and open up those pathways in alpha and theta at the same time. Now, to drive a car or walk across the road, we have to be in beta enough that we're not going to get run over, you know. Right. Now, if you're sitting and writing your weekly or monthly checks, you have to be in beta enough to be sure you sign the check. Okay. So there. <laughs> That beta is really important for and if we're you know you don't want to be cooking on the stove in theta you know maybe you could be daydreaming in alpha okay and not burn your food okay as long as your you know beta brain's paying some attention but when you're sitting on the couch like you're talking about whether it's half awake and half asleep or meditating or just in a deep repose what naturally occurs for you because you are a meditator is your brain waves just drop into this deeper state anyway. Yeah, I'm and used then, to being in an alpha state a lot of times because I work intuitively with people and I know I have to be in that state. Same with me, you know, we both, you and I both. It, but for me, what happens is I do, I've been put on a lot of brainwave machines. Scientists always love my brain. And they're like, how can you be in all four brainwave states at once? We don't understand it, you know? And like when I do readings to talk and give the reading to somebody, I have to engage beta. But what actually occurs for me is it's like the classic mystical bell curve, which is the brain waves, the way they the machines are, it's the right and left sides of the brain, and it's a beta, alpha, theta, delta. So most people are closed here and they're just in beta like this, okay, like a flower. Well, this the is also an audio show, so people will uh, have to hear a description about it. Sure. Well, think about like uh, beta being like the flower opened on the top, but everything is closed on the other three brainwave states. But the mystical bell curve, basically, if you're meditating and not talking, is that beta closes, alpha opens, theta opens enormously, and it creates like a big upside down bell, you know, uh, where the wide parts at the very bottom. And that's because we're able to hold theta and delta in our consciousness without just going to sleep. Everybody accesses theta and delta every night. They just don't remember what happens to them. Okay. Which is again why keeping a dream journal becomes an important spiritual discipline. Right. And and so it, helping people advance to this level is a lot of practicing with getting into these alpha and theta states. And, and you can do that in many ways. Every night when you sleep, you get a chance to practice. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, I, I mean, consciously, but um, you know, I, I, you, we can entrain ourselves and I'm sure you, I, I we both teach people how to do that. So you, um, yeah. I was gonna say, you can read something spiritual for just 15 minutes, that's it. It'll raise your vibration, and then you can set your intention. Pull a, a, a you know a cocoon of golden light around you. Uh, ask for a contact with the masters or with your spirit guides or by yourself. And you know you may need to do it a few times before you remember what happened. Right. But it does work. So yeah, it um, takes dedication. 
Yeah, so people who are interested in in this, again, I'm hoping that I'll get around, you know, my, as you know, I'm, uh, my mom is almost 98 years old, and she's <laughs> been telling us she's going to go to the other side for about two years now, but she's keeps coming back. So she's got like the cat with nine lives. But uh, we've all had visitations in my family from my father who passed 30 years ago. So she's seen him. He's come to talk to me. He's come to talk to my little sister and my nephew. And, um, you know, so and and I'm I have these wonderful pets. I've always had two cats. And so even when one passes, they're they're very evolved you know, familiars, basically, they're guardians. Someone came to see me, you know, astral travel to see me last week. And, and they called me on the phone. And they said, Do you have two huge cats, like lion protectors? I said, <laughs> the inner place, they are big, you know, probably overfed. But yes, I have two cats, but he was actually seeing their spirit bodies, which are very large protectors and one sits by the door sleeps by the door protecting the house and the other one sleeps with me so you know oh. he picked up on that so interesting so we're getting near the end of the show this goes by so fast and hopefully we can do more <laughs> because you're so fascinating and have so much knowledge about all this and i'd love to explore that more with you and so well, let's give your website for people again yeah. It's mine. Mine is Trisha McCannon. It's just my name, T R I C I A. That spelling and McCannon is just like it sounds. Mac M C Cannon C A N N O N uh, dot com. You can go to my website. Um, there's all sorts of uh, actually online classes. The mystery schools are. Um, I I spent about 14 years teaching a mystery school in person with people all over the world, and so each one of there's 12 of those lessons, and they're about 100. 130 pages each. So you can order those. You'll see my five books. You can go to Amazon also and order my books. I have a bunch of DVDs and CDs and, you know, I've been teaching for a long time. And then there's actually a website called sacredstories.com that I've done seven amazing courses for that have like six or seven modules and about 1200 slides on uh, the, you know, galactic cycles of time, the tree of life, the divine feminine and mother, the lost years of Jesus, all of that. So those, those courses are on sacredstories.com. My website is trishamccannon.com. And then the way of truth mystery school.org is the one where you can sign up and there's all sorts of courses. I have a course that I've taught on, um, the ancient wisdom, uh, with the, the hermetic laws of the universe. Uh, I have a course that I've taught on a self-mastery. These are all probably the equivalent of a 300-page book. You're amazing. But right now we have to end the show. And I hope people will really take advantage of all that you have to offer. This is so great talking with you. So thank you, Tricia. Oh, my pleasure, Peter. Thank you for having me. Sure. And this is Peter Roth, your host of Energy Stew at prn.live. I can be reached at peter at heartriver, H-E-A-R-T, river.org. I'd love to hear from you, and thanks so much for listening.